I am going to now hand the talking stick over to Tracy to lead the session. Thanks so much, Kevin. Um, welcome, everyone. It's so nice to have you here. I'm just going to take one second to get my uh, slides showing. And Kevin, just so you know, I will not be able to easily see the chat. So please let me know if anyone has questions or comments as mm -hmm. uh, the session moves forward. Well so this is our opportunity to, we had originally called it Reflect and Network, but really at ABLE, we're all about reflecting and connecting. And um, and so I sort of on the fly renamed this. And this is just really an, an opportunity to reflect on, of course, um, the conference and, and what we've been learning and and um, opportunities and ideas that we're seeing in the moment to move our work forward and mostly to give you a space to connect and network with others so that you have an opportunity to sort of think about who you want to continue to uh, work with or um, ideas that you might have for things that we should be doing at ABLE uh, to move your work forward. So that's really what this session is all about. Um, as Kevin mentioned, you know, at any time you can feel free to turn your camera off. There's uh, don't feel any pressure at all to unmute or anything. You can use the chat um, if you want, especially for this first part of the session to completely get out of your chair or wherever you are, lie down on the floor, get comfortable. Um, I'd really encourage you to do that. This this is a, a space where you get to um, re reflect and connect and hopefully restore a little bit from your time in the conference. So. Um, just a little bit about me. I'm really pleased to be facilitating this session um, with you all today. Thanks so much for making time to come and join me. Um, so I, I put a couple of images of myself on the screen. So of course, I am the president of ABLE. I run a uh, for all intents and purposes, a Center for Teaching and Learning at a university. I'm an academic, I'm a researcher, I'm really interested in transforming uh, learning, and I'm a registered yoga teacher, and so I spend a fair amount of time facilitating yoga sessions for, for others, especially the students here who I work at a medical school, so they're, <laughs> they're in need of, of some yoga often. Um, but of course, we all wear um, multiple identities and, and have multiple identities, and so those are just two of mine. I'm also a wife and a mom and a friend and a daughter and a, you know, sister and, and all kinds of things. And I really want you as we get ready to begin our reflection piece to just take a moment and think about those multiple identities that you hold and, um, and maybe think about what's showing up for you at this conference. I'm sure that your identity as an educator or e-portfolio practitioner or researcher is probably fairly prominent, but that doesn't mean that those other identities go away. And um, what I'm going to be encouraging you to do is as we think about networking, to really think about ourselves and how we can be um, overall well in the work that we're doing as we're living our lives. And so hopefully you'll have an opportunity to think about that today. So in the ePortfolio community, we reflect, 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 and uh, it is an important component. In fact, you know, I, I just listened to Helen at the ePortfolio's 101 session yesterday say it's not really a portfolio if there isn't reflection. And so um, that is an important component of the work that we do. And I think as a yoga teacher, it's also something that I'm also very mindful of. Um, I'm always thinking about how can I um, sort of show up for my participants um, in a way that is authentic. And, um, you know, we all go through moments, I've got COVID as we speak. So um, we're not always feeling 100%. And that's true for us in our work as well. And so I really want to give you an opportunity to really think about your past experiences, of course, this conference, um, but also, you know, what's been working well for you and what you might want to let go of as you move forward. And just another connection to another session, Amy Shakino has been giving great workshops on um, creating your professional brand. And so you might also be thinking a little bit about um, how your identities show up for you in terms of your uh, professional brand and that identity that you want um, to show outwardly to the world. So as we get ready to reflect, um, I'm going to invite you again to take a comfortable seat. You could close your eyes. 
Feel free to lie down, whatever um, makes sense, but I'm gonna take you through a brief breathing exercise just to allow us to drop into this space and to give us an opportunity to just transition out of um, the traditional conference session and into this one. So you could have your hands wherever you like, resting in your lap, um, across your belly. I'm gonna suggest um, just sort of fingertips resting underneath your collarbones. This is one of the um, places that my favorite yoga teacher often encourages us to put our hands and if you're closing your eyes you can go ahead and do that and just begin to notice your breath and so there's no need to control it in any way and as you breathe in just notice the way that your chest expands and that breath moves into the belly and as you exhale, the belly contracts and the breath moves out of the body. Inhaling, really expanding. And then exhaling, letting go. As you inhale, you may want to just pause briefly at the top of the inhale. And then as you exhale, pause briefly at the bottom of the exhale. And as you continue to breathe, and just notice the sense of the air on your skin in the space that you're in. You might notice sounds around you. And any other sensations that might you might become aware of as you're breathing in and out. And we're not noticing to judge, but really just to become more aware of our surroundings. I'm aware of the sensations in our body as we breathe in and out. If you notice any tense spots in your body, give yourself permission to wiggle yourself into a more comfortable place, hopefully letting go of any pain sensation. And finally, if you notice thoughts popping into your head, just notice them there not to hang on to them. Imagine there are clouds just floating by on a soft breeze. Inhaling to expand. Exhaling, letting go. each breath, the opportunity to move into the present moment. And letting go of what's happened before. So please take three more deep breaths at your own pace.
When you've finished your third breath, you can just take one more opportunity to notice how you're feeling. And you can float your eyes open when you're ready. You're choosing to do so. You could also keep them closed and just listen. And we'll move on to the next part of our session. I hope that felt nice to just take a few moments to breathe and uh, to just become aware of what's going on in your body. Okay, so now is the time that we're going to um, gather a little inspiration and think about the conference and our experience as we've had it over the last two days and beyond. You're not limited to your conference experience. And I'm going to give you um, three or four minutes to just either jot down or bring to mind um, some things that you might want to start, stop, and continue. And as I mentioned at the outset, of course, we're all um, wearing our ePortfolio identities um, this week and, and thinking about ePortfolios and our work. But you could also think beyond that. Um, so these are some prompts that I pulled from two different card decks, and I've got them in the resources section for you at the end of today's um, session. Um, the first is from, uh, the ones on the left are from a deck called the Sovereign Oracle. And I pulled three on purpose because um, I wanted to give you some opportunities to really um, have some wait, ideas to explore. So I've got them handy here and I'm just going to, you, hopefully you can read them, um, but in case not, I'll read the prompts to you. So reproduce, um, the prompts are not everything has to be an original um, systematize. Try again and see if the result changes and recreate someone else's style or work to expand your skill. So those might be useful prompts for you as you're thinking about um, what you want to do next. Mastery, where have you put the hours? Focus on that. Some things take time to build skill. Be patient with yourself and get the right teacher for your area of study. So I thought that was an interesting one to pull today, especially as we're thinking about networking and, and who we might want to connect with to move our, our initiatives forward. And then finally, travel. Go somewhere else for a while. Maybe you just did that with me. I'm not sure. Um, the answer is not in your studio or at your desk. And finally, take yourself out on an artist date. Go somewhere different than your usual haunts. So I love these cards and actually I've given them to several members of my team, decks of these. Um, they're meant for design, actually, um, not yoga necessarily related. Um, and sometimes we as a team will pull one and, and think about how the card just manifests in the day or the project that we're working on. I also find personally that um, it's nice to pull them. They always give me inspiration for things that I want to do in my day, whether that's my yoga teaching or um, my work um, in higher education. The other card I pulled is from a, a deck called Inquire Within. And uh, this one says, give it the time it needs. So maybe you've heard a little bit about that this week, and maybe you've been thinking about that either about your own um, self and your position professionally or personally. And so I thought those two cards might give you um, some nice uh, kind of food for thought. So again, three or four minutes to just jot down anything that pops up for you that you might want to start, stop, or continue. So I noticed some folks lift their heads. So I'm going to take that as a cue that you've had enough time. That was about three minutes. And before I give you an opportunity to potentially share with others, um, just one uh, more little note. Um, as you're thinking about what you might want to start, stop, continue, maybe also think about what you need more of to thrive. And again, this is one of my favorite yoga teachers uh, questions. Um, she asks it all the time. 
And it really resonates for me, particularly in um, the current time that we're in, where we're all dealing still with the pandemic. And I think many of us have recognized that we need to work on you know, thriving, which doesn't necessarily only mean being really successful in, in our jobs or with our initiatives, but also personally. So um, I've taken to the work of James Clear. You might know that he wrote the book Atomic Habits, and he says that your current habits are perfectly designed to live, designed to deliver your current results. And um, I read that and thought, oh, yep, yep, I get that. Um, so maybe that resonates for you. He also says that every action um, is a vote for the person we want to become. So everything that we do, we're putting a vote in for who we want uh, to be. And then um, Jay Shetty, who is a, a former Buddhist monk and now podcaster, you might have seen him online. Um, he has a great book called Think Like a Monk. He says living intentionally means stepping back from external goals, letting go of outward definitions of success and looking within. And I think often we're in a business that's super, super busy and we're always trying to get things done. And so um, maybe a little bit more food for thought as, as we move into um, a little bit of sharing. So uh, I'm proposing that we jam, and um, I think Kevin has the URL to this jam board in the chat for you, or will be in the chat for you shortly. You can see it's also there on the screen. And so if you could focus on this first board to start, um, you could use the sticky notes, which um, are just on the left-hand side of the screen, right under the circle. If you grab that um, or oh, sorry, not that, if you grab the little post-it note that's under the um, big round black circle on the left-hand side, you'll be able to open up a post-it and be able to add something. You'll see that there are three columns there, put things where you will. And um, I'm curious to see what some of us are interested in starting, stopping and continuing. And I will pull up the Jamboard for us um, on the screen so you can, we can see in real time. And again, um, this, is, this is your session. So please feel free to add to the Jamboard if you like and um, not if you don't want to share. So as I get the Jamboard up, um, I'm also happy to um, entertain any questions or comments at this point. So please feel free to unmute or put any comments uh, that you have in the chat. Kevin will tell me what I need to answer. <laughs> Just two comments. One person just finished one of the books that you referenced and Teresa Confrey mentioned that Jay Shetty also has, Shetty also has his own podcast. Yes, he does. And I, I think I have a link to that in the, in the resources for you. So uh, you'll be able to see that. Um, I see some awesome things happening in the Jamboard. Let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger. I can read it. <laughs> oh, I'm zooming out, not zooming in. Hang on. Okay, so start small. Oh, I love that. <laughs> start where you are. Always a good a good point. Um, one of the things I often think about, um, especially with the work that we do, is thinking about um, starting where we are for sure, with also some intentionality and mindfulness around where we want to go. So um, you know, I, there's a story in Atomic Habits. I think it's Atomic Habits, um, where. Um, James Clear talks about uh, someone who was trying to create a habit to go to the gym. And um, they started just driving to the gym and walking into the gym and maybe staying for five minutes and leaving and doing that every day. And the idea that 
but you're not actually becoming a fit person. But going back to, you know, those actions that we take are a vote for the person we want to become, you know, the, the person reflected that, you know, the, the thing was they needed to create the habit to just go to the gym. And eventually they stayed for seven minutes or 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, maybe half an hour and worked up to that. And I loved that idea that, that that's really smart starting where you are. Um, I'm not yet somebody who goes to the gym for an hour every day. So maybe I'll just drive there, create that habit of, of going to where you want to be. And I think in our ePortfolio work, it's the same kind of thing. Um, having some intentionality about where we'd like to get to and then taking small steps to, to move in that direction, which can, can feel challenging on our campuses, I think, because oftentimes, you know, folks want the ePortfolio implemented today. And um, and these things, as I'm sure you've been hearing over the course of the conference, do take time and iteration. And and, uh, and, and we learn things as we move forward. And I think that's true about our own well-being um, as well. You know, we try things and, and we can, you know, see what works. Um, I, I love yoga for me. I will admit that um, over the last few weeks, it's been difficult for me to maintain a regular practice. I was traveling and now um, I, I've been um, sick for the last couple of weeks. And so I really, I just haven't had the energy. And um, I met with my coach um, and mentor who is also a yoga teacher. And, and she said, you know, just, just rest, like that can be your practice. And, and it was such a great reminder that, um, you know, for for our own well-being, but also for our work, we can take that time to just step back and rest and reflect. And we're gonna, that's gonna be helpful for us in the long run. I think when we're on that hamster wheel, it's impossible to really see the forest for the trees and, and take that opportunity to really learn from what's happening in the moment so that we can make um, good decisions as we move forward. Anyone else like to share? Um, I like stop, stop stressing more, have, have yoga and reflect, stop feeling rushed. Yeah, um, continue your portfolio, continue being around e-portfolio people. They're the best people. Well, we might all be a bit biased. <laughs> you might, that might be a sticky note to the choir, but, um, but this is for sure a, such a warm, welcoming, and I always say sherry, even though it's not a word, you know, sherry community, like we really are interested in helping one another to be successful. And um, regardless of where we're at um, in our, in our, you know, implementations, uh, we all can learn from one another um, because we all come to this again with those multiple identities that we bring to the table. So, you know, it might be your disciplinary background. It might be, you know, that you work in meditation and mindfulness and, and yoga. It might be that you are an amazing marathon or I don't know, you know, whatever it is for you, an amazing parent, an amazing friend. Maybe you are somebody who just exhibits kindness all the time. We can learn from you. So um, we all have um, things to bring to the table, gifts that um, we can share with the world. And I think sometimes that's a challenging thing when we're on the hamster wheel is to really figure out what are those things that I want to share and how can I really contribute. See, there's a couple other things in the chat. Um, anything else um, for me at this point, Kevin? You are good to go. Okay, fantastic. So I'm gonna stop sharing the Jamboard for a moment, but please feel free to continue to add to it. Um, we're gonna come back to it in one moment. I'll get back to my slides, perhaps. Yes, I am. Okay, so now I'm going to get you to um, go to the second page of our Jamboard. And on the second page, um, there's another question. How would you like to connect or network with others to support you in your life slash work? In other words, what do you need? Or this is the opportunity to think about thriving. So if you go to the top of the Jamboard, you'll see that there's a little, um, and I will show you um, on the screen, just give me one moment. Um, you can go to that next board and you can feel free to add to it on this page. So um, you were just in 
the first board. And if you go to the top of the board, you can get to the second board. So I encourage you to feel free to add some stickies there. And you can think broadly about this. So maybe you want to connect with others around research. Maybe you want to connect with others around bringing mindfulness into your ePortfolio initiative or into your life. Maybe you want to connect with others um, to find out more about tools and technologies. So um, yeah, please put, put your ideas there. Oh, I love this first one. Love an accountability partner for writing uh, a book manuscript. Awesome accountability in personal professional practice, particular in particular in e-portfolio creation and development, connecting on and collaborating on uh, others with, with with all the e-portfolio badasses. Well, um, I, I can I can think of one person in our community who we've referred to as a badass, and we can certainly connect you with them. Um, Sharing uh, resources for students, admin, and educators. Great. Um, return to show and tell, celebrating student successes and personal successes. Ooh, I love that. Um, for the person who wrote to return to show and tell, um, do you want to unmute and say anything about that um, or type it into the chat? No pressure. Um, you don't have to, but we'd love to hear what you mean by that. I love show and tell, did as a kid, still do. I want to, I love like being in sessions where people are showing their students work and then uh, we can raise questions for how students got to that point and how we can shape assignments and build them. But also like all of us are investing hours and hours on things that nobody sees other than the students in our classroom and carving out spaces um, where we can share those that aren't as formal as a call for papers and presenting at a conference, but where there is, you know, small group give and take, and hopefully some of our communities of practice can do this on campuses. Wow, Debbie, I love that. Um, and I love that you, you were speaking and I couldn't see, but I knew it was you. So <laughs> thanks for, thanks for unmuting and sharing. Um, yeah, it makes me think of on 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 some of the campuses I've worked at, we've had open classroom sessions, and so maybe we can have open e-portfolio implementation sessions. Maybe we we invite folks into our classes where we're using portfolios or programs where we're implementing them, and 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 get that have that informal collaboration. That's a great idea. Um, teacher perspective would love to see more examples of course level e-portfolios done well maybe an asynchronous community space. Okay, yeah, I love that. Um, it's not about e-portfolios, but for rock climbing, I wanna expand my community of female climbers because I tend to lean on my husband who's climbed longer than me when we go out. Oh, I love that. So anybody, if you have suggestions for how to expand your um, group of female climbers, um, you know, please, please feel free to respond to anything and sticky. I'm, I'm going to unmute for a second because I have zero idea how to like show that entire sticky note, <laughs> but I do draw a parallel to e-portfolios <laughs> like further oh. down in the comment, but I don't know how to make it bigger. I, that's a great question. I don't know how to make it bigger either. Crap. <laughs> okay. you, might, uh, you might try cutting the second half and making a second sticky note. Hmm. That's where I was going to suggest as well. I will try that. Thank you. Yeah. Rubric repositories. Well, uh, you might already know about the value rubrics. And um, I know Kathy Yancey and Terry Rhodes just gave a great presentation on um, some of the rubrics and um, scoring guides that they have come across, but we could maybe uh, create a repository or, or someone could. I, well, I say we, I think of ABLE, but also you are all able. So um, we're happy to work with anybody who wants to get started on something like that. Um, I'd like to engage again with the out of practice community. It's yes, it still exists. Um, we've heard that a couple of times, um, or maybe a few um, over this conference, um, especially in the sessions that Amy Ch Ch Chiquino has been running. So um, yes, we will, uh, we will look into that for you. And for those of you who are interested in that, uh, maybe what we'll do is send out, uh, a, you know, sort of a, a, 
a sign up sheet for those who are interested. Um, one of the things I thought of during Amy's session yesterday was how um, many of us have been part of writing retreats, you know, or a writing community where you go to a coffee shop or you go on retreat with a group and there are very strict guidelines about you write for this many minutes or hours or whatever it is. And then you kind of get feedback and, and things. So that might be something that we could try um, with creating our professional um, online presences. <laughs> so that would be good. Um, yeah, okay. And someone's asking where you're located for the rock climbing. So we've got help coming. So that's great. Um, oh, okay. And Melissa's got a repository going. Fantastic. So Melissa, we'll have to connect to your repository. Um, so that's... And developing a folio thinking course for faculty development for a community college system in California. And I have spent the last week pulling together rubrics from all over the world for their assessment component. And so it's a start. They're already in there. I already got them. I mean, it's not everything, but it's a lot. And so, I mean, if one of them, I can't be the only person that has a pile of them, then we should put our piles together, you know? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, let's definitely figure out how we can connect. And I think that's sometimes part of the challenge is how do we connect all of these various things that we're doing um, into one place? And certainly ABLE can be a hub for that. Um, so yeah, let's think about how we can we can kind of get to that um, for sure. So I wanted, we, we don't have a ton of time left, um, but I did want to just open the floor for um, open discussions and connections. Um, my suggestion is going to be if you would like to connect with others around a particular topic and you want to um, show yourself, then you can certainly in the chat um, indicate your name and that you would be interested on a particular topic. And we're happy, um, I'm happy to, um, I keep saying we and um, Kevin and Christina and Helen are probably all like closing their eyes, like not, uh, don't implicate us. Um, but I am, am happy to try and do a little matchmaking and um, and help to to make some connections for folks who are interested in, in different things. One of the things that we've been considering rebooting at ABLE is our communities of practice, which we had for um, special interest groups, which we had um, for a while, but um, they kind of went dormant. And so um, that's something also that we could consider rebooting if, if folks are interested. So if you have ideas about things that you'd like, um, please feel free to put them in, in the chat um, or unmute and uh, ask away. Maybe just a quick plug for the ABLE Digital Ethics Task Force. So if you don't know what it is, please do come to the Ignite sessions because Christine Slate and I will be talking about the past, present and future and hopefully get um, people interested in joining us in year four of the task force. So that is definitely one very active uh, community that can use some more bad asses. And we do have that very particular bad ass in the group as well. So if you want to get to know more or uh, work more with um, with Megan Mice, please do feel free to come along. Um, we will be issuing the call for participation sometime soon, just need to figure out what to want to say. But if you have any questions, you can definitely always email um, one of us and then we can keep you on, on the list of things. But yes, please do feel free to join any of the groups. And because we are very much online these days, I did put the link to the Australian out of practice uh, group into the chat. Um, it's not just for the Aussies. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Christina. And the Digital Ethics Task Force is such a great example of this very thing, people stepping back and reflecting and discussing and then making connections with one another around um, a topic that they were really interested in a few years ago. So that first happened um, at our ABLE annual meeting, I think in 2019 um, in, in New York City. And um, they've had several um, years now of really amazing work come out of that group, all volunteers and just folks who were um, had a shared interest and wanted to, to work on digital ethics and we're all benefiting from it. So thank you, Christina, and to everyone in on the Digital Ethics Task Force, current and past, who, who have contributed to that. Anything else others would like to share?
Okay, hearing nothing and seeing nothing yet, um, feel free, you have access to the Jamboard so you can continue to use that and um, add to it. We'll of course be sharing that out with the conference resources. So, um, you know, if, if, if your name is on there and you're, you don't want it on there, you can feel free to take it off, but hopefully um, you're gonna use this as an opportunity to connect with, with everyone um, so that you can, um, you know, continue to, to connect with those that were going to help you um, in your personal and professional endeavors. And I see that Kevin has already found a Facebook page for you, Aaron. Um, <laughs> Kevin is, if you need a pun or like information on pretty much anything, you can, you know, Kevin is, is your person. Um, so I promised that I would share with you um, some of the resources. These are just a few of the things that, um, that I like to, to go to. Um, of course, it's not exhaustive, um, but hopefully, uh, you know, we can also create a shared space of resources for um, uh, for for these kinds of resources, um, if, if you would like. So if you've got good things to add, um, I, I'm just about to start um, a book by um, Rushika Taljwan on called Inclusion on Purpose, which I'm really excited about. Um, I, it's not on my list because I haven't read it yet, but I'm sure I'm going to love it. So um, yeah, so there's um, lots of great resources. Um, I'm really um, grateful and privileged that you took the time to join today. Um, thank you so, so much for coming. I hope this session has been a little bit restful, a little bit of reflection, and a little bit of opportunity for you to network. Take a, take a peek at the list of um, participants in the room and uh, you know make note of anybody who you might want to connect with like Megan Mize, who is our ePortfolio badass that we keep referring to. So, um, but there's um, so many good people um, in the room and, and we all appreciate you all so much. 